Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, The Red Hand. I am standing here in the rain, waiting for him to die. And in a moment now, the sound of the trap dropping open will echo over the shining wet street, and he will be dead. Then I can walk in this world I live in, walk as freely as perhaps you do, without death in the wake of my footsteps. Listen, my life was not always bounded by four walls and a lonesome room. No, my life was full, rich and full, and I lived in a French province on the Upper Rhine. I was beautiful, they said. Golden hair, vigorous with life. They said I could have married any man in all the province. I was wealthy as well as beautiful. Oh, many years ago, it seems. I was visiting Madame Ruprex in Strasbourg. At a party there one night, I met Monsieur de Latourelle. A very great pleasure, mademoiselle. Oh, how do you do, monsieur? And uh, thank you. Some champagne out on the terrace, mademoiselle? Thank you, monsieur. I, I think a breath of fresh air would be very nice. Well, this is better. I'm more at home under a full moon. Really? A different girl under the same old moon. Oh, no, please, mademoiselle. <laughs> I only meant that this is more appropriate. Outdoors, the moon, the smell of the night, the trees, and, and you. A beautiful woman to talk to. Oh, thank you, monsieur. Uh, mademoiselle Mumbo, uh, permit me. We have just met, but I have never known a more beautiful woman, ever. Oh. Anyone I wanted more to kiss. Oh, you... You shouldn't kiss me like that, monsieur. Well, don't look so surprised. <laughs> Do I? Exactly the same way as when I kissed your hand back there. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go in? To safety? Oh, please, monsieur, I... <laughs> oh, here's Madame Ruprecht looking for us. And Monsieur de la Tourelle. Well, I can't turn my back for a second. Where have you two been? We were just... Uh, a... Just a breath of fresh air, you know. Oh. You have other acquaintances for me to meet, I'll gamble. How did you guess? <laughs> come, come along, monsieur. Au revoir, mademoiselle. We shall meet again. There you are, Anne Monbeau. I have some wonderful news for you. Oh, and where's Monsieur, Monsieur de la Tourelle? <laughs> he had to leave hurriedly, send his good night through me. But listen, he's coming to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow? I arranged it all. But what if I, what if I don't care to see him? But my dear, he's a catch if there ever was one. They say he's fabulously rich, has a chateau in the Vosges and everything. And you object to his wanting to visit you? Hmm. Forgive me. I suppose it is all right. Of course it is. Now run along and get ready. Well, Monsieur de Latourelle did come to see me the next day. And the day after that. And within a week he'd stolen my heart. Oh, I was delirious with this new kind of happiness. And so we were married. And my husband took me to his chateau, Les Rochers. 
tucked away in the scenic Vosges Mountains. All those first few weeks were wonderful weeks. And foolishly, I believed they would never end. At first, I only sensed something was wrong. He would leave me alone for days and nights on end. I was not allowed to go outside the walls. The servants spied on me. Neighbors who came for an occasional visit were told that I was ill, that I was unable to see anyone at all. I could not understand my husband's attitude. And then one evening, my only friend, my Norman maid, Amant, told me a letter for me was in my husband's study. It was the first letter I'd received since the first day I came to Verroche. It is true, madame. I had no business to look inside the desk drawer, but I did. And there I saw the letter. Addressed to me? Yes, madame. But why? I was told that I'd never received a single letter here. Oh, forgive me, madame, but that is not true. The letter is there. It is that, well, Monsieur de la Tourelle is keeping it from you. But how could he? Why? Amand, you, you must help me to get that letter. I will, madame, gladly. Now, while Monsieur de la Tourelle is not at home... Quiet, Amand. Hold the light higher. Hurry then, madame, while I close the door. Good. Now, now, this way. Desk is over here. We can get the letter and be gone before anyone... Hold the light higher, Amand. I can't see. What happened? The candle, madame. Oh. It blew out. The portiere. Heaven's name, what can we do now? Take the letter to your bedroom. Then bring it back later. Oh, no, no, that would be dangerous. You go get a fresh lighter. I I'll stay here and wait for you. But, madame, suppose he do should... He... Do as I say. He returns tomorrow. Now, hurry. If you wish, hurry, but... Hurry, hurry and be quiet. I'll close the portiere. The candle mustn't blow out again. <gasps> what was that? Easy there, Lafayette. Not so much noise. Oh, my husband. Dr. Well, Rell, we should have buried this man where we killed him. He's heavy. Here. 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 Oh! Do you want us to be discovered? Fine thing if we had the gendarme from Strasbourg down in the district investigating. I've told you again and again. We must have peace around Les Rochers if we want to carry on our... our little business without interference. Hmm. Too bad Monsieur de Poissy came upon us while we were robbing that merchant from Cologne. Oh, he was such a good neighbor. I still think we should have robbed him and thrown him in the bushes. I'll make the decisions. It's a good thing Blanchard here has no tongue. I couldn't stand two of you gabbing all the time. I... Listen. Someone's coming. Oh, uh, monsieur, I, I did not... Oh, come in, Armand. Now, what are you doing in my study? Monsieur, I thought you... Could... Yes. Yes, that I was out. You know this cannot be tolerated. What did you want? Well, uh, there was a letter for Madame among the mail. I, I, I thought to get it and take it to her. Oh. A letter, eh? Yes, monsieur. And she probably wants it very much? I thought so, monsieur. I thought I'd surprise... Well, you can't have it. I'll decide whether Madame will or won't have her letter. Yes, monsieur. Now get out of here. And if I ever catch you snooping in these rooms again, I'll cut out your heart. Go on now. Out. Yes, sir. Oh, stupid woman. Not so stupid. Well, Sarah and me, we stood in front of the body, but I think she saw his face. Oh, nonsense. The fool was scared to death. Nevertheless, you shouldn't have let her go. She'll talk. We should have slit her throat. Oh, don't be an old woman, Lefebvre. She can tell nothing of tonight's business. Yes, and what's unusual about my early return from a trip? <laughs> that can easily be explained. Mm, maybe so. And these women around here will get you in trouble yet. Oh, nonsense. My wife knows nothing, suspects even less. Uh, she knew I was leader of the Mer Rouge. Stealing, robbing, murdering cutthroats, they call us. Uh, if she but knew, she would have a stroke, I think. What makes you so sure your wife knows nothing? She's too simple for that. Besides, if I thought for one minute that she knew anything, well, see this dagger? It would be in her heart, good Lefebvre. Uh, what was that? What? Oh, the portier. The wind, Lefebvre, only the wind. 
Why, you're jumpy as a cat. Mm, I must have a look. I'm sure someone was at the window. <laughs> no one's there. Now get about your business. See what's in Monsieur de Poissy's pockets. Ah, poor fellow. If he had only not come by when we were roasting that merchant's foot. Oh. You, Blanchard, help me stand him up. We can search better that. No. No, I don't trust your women. Remember your other wife, Victorine. Yes. I had to send her on a long journey. But this one is sly. What she knows, she keeps to herself or uh, tells the gendarmes, maybe? No, no, Lefebvre. She knows nothing. But before she learns the truth, she too will go on a journey. Oh, I see. And she is a wealthy woman, no? Do you think I would marry a woman who wasn't? Of course she's wealthy. When she's dead, it will be mine. Just as... Victorine's what? Uh, and uh, how will you murder her? Uh, I've yet to plan that, but it must be a clever way. Yeah, we shall see. And I'll come along. There's food in the galley. <laughs> but the, the body... Oh, it's safe enough here. Armand is too scared to return, and no one else knows I'm back. It's all right. Come on, fletch, fletch upon Blanchard. Come on, Blanchard, come on. Did you get a good look at the merchant's eyes when his feet were roasting? <laughs> <laughs> Madame, Madame, where are you? Here, over here, behind the portiers. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm a little faint. I heard them go off. Oh, I was so frightened they would discover you. Oh, if they had. Here, here, give me your hand, help me up. Oh, what, what's that? A, a body. A what? Give me your hand, Amand. There, steady. Pull now. That's it. Oh, what is it, Madame? I... I felt the corpse. Corpse? Yes. Poor Monsieur de Poissy. De Poissy? He murdered them. Oh, quickly, Amant. We must leave here tonight. My husband is the leader of the Mar Rouge. Mar Rouge? You mean... It can't be. Yes. They stood boasting of exploits while I hid behind the portiers. Oh, Madame, your life. It is in very great danger. And yours, Amant. Anyone who knows about the Mar Rouge. Death. Yes, oh, we must leave tonight now. Oh, madame, at once, hurry. We must leave at once. made hasty preparations. Amant packed some food. She even found men's clothing for disguise. As we left the estate secretly, we could hear Monsieur de la Tourelle and his accomplice, Lefebvre, discussing an appropriate burial place for the body. Going by side roads, we struck out for Strasbourg in the roles of a traveling tailor and his wife. Amant looked the part of the tailor very well, and I had told her to pretend she was dumb and couldn't speak. I dyed my hair and made myself up beyond recognition. Several days later, we were halfway to Strasbourg. It was late afternoon. And needing food and shelter for the night, we stopped at a country blacksmith's, offering to mend clothes in return for an overnight stay. With luck, we will be in Strasbourg in a few days. Once inside the city, monsieur will never find us. Hush, not too loud. Here's a blacksmith's wife. All going well? Yes, it's uh, it's close to sundown, though. We could use a light. All right, I'll get this. That's the third time you've asked. Always the same answer. She just won't burn it until she must. What's that? A man on horseback. He's stopping. Can you make out who he is? The gentlemen are standing. The blacksmith and his wife are greeting him. Courage, madame. Oh, Armand, it's... Monsieur de la Tourelle, outside there. Oh, heaven protect us. What can we do? Courage. Here he comes. Hmm. You do the talking if necessary. You will recognize I am not the man. All right. Go on with the sewing unless he interrupts us. Shh. Here they come. 
Pray she doesn't fetch the light we asked for. Well, I can get you a sandwich and some coffee, monsieur. Only a bite. Anything I can eat and drink in my hand while my horse is being shot. Oh, well, one minute, monsieur. Oh. Ah, oh, tailors. You may be able to help me. Oh? I am looking for my wife and her maid. A beautiful blonde woman and a robust Norman. They fled my house, taking with them money and jewels. Of this last, of course, I care little. But to lose my wife, that is a tragedy. Perhaps in your travels you've seen such a pair. Oh, uh, no, no, monsieur. Not at all. You could not mistake them. Your they... coffee and sandwich, monsieur. Huh? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, please, tell your husband to make haste. I shall pay him double if he hurries. Pierre, hurry with the horse. Monsieur pays double for quick work. Tell monsieur it is finished. You heard that, monsieur, it's finished. Good. I shall go then. Oh, but the sandwiches, the coffee. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Here. Five francs. Oh, that is too much, monsieur. And you ate No nothing. matter, no matter. I must hurry. We slept very little that night, and we were on our way early next morning. I'd been forced to sell a rather peculiar ring, given me by my husband, to a jeweler the day before. It was only a matter of time when my husband would stumble on to that clue. So, with all caution, we had to hurry. At first, we thought of giving up the idea of going to Strasbourg and of going on to my husband's home instead. But we knew Monsieur de la Tourelle would have spies all over that region by now. It would have been suicide to risk going home. We took a room in an inn several miles from the city. And on the same evening, a Madame Berenice de Roder, on her way to Paris, stayed at the inn. Amand remarked on how closely her features resembled mine, how her long blonde hair could have been mine. I thought nothing more of it at the time, and we retired. But in the middle of the night, voices in the courtyard awakened us. Amand, Amand, wake up. Yes. Is it time to go? Shh. Someone's coming up the stairs. It sounds like Monsieur de la Tourelle. I'm very tired of very much. He's outside. Oh, I shall scream if he comes in. Oh. No, no, Monsieur La Tourelle. That is not the room. Uh, down that way. Oh. Oh, the number is similar. Uh, thank you. Good night now. We must get out of here. Now. No, no. We went without paying. The innkeeper would remember us. Would throw suspicion on us and we must stay. But he tried to come here. No, he didn't. It was a mistake. He was looking for another room. You'll see I'm right. I hope you're right. I hope. Monsieur, we want to pay our bill. Uh, oui, madame, oui. Is uh, that correct? Uh, uh, oui, oui, madame. What is the excitement over there? Oh, have you not heard, madame? No. That poor young lady, Madame the Baroness de Rodeur, was murdered in her bed. Oh. Yes. It happened during the night. When she did not rise at ten, her maid went up and there she was, a knife in her heart, with a little note stuck to the handle. Oh, my poor place. This will ruin me. Well, what did the note say? It said... Once more, the Mer Rouge have avenged themselves. The, uh, the, the police, they, they know who did it. Without a doubt. It was the elegant gentleman I told them came here during the night. He was not seen this morning. I see. Then he will be brought to justice for this. Oh, on the contrary, madame. Nothing will be done. The prosecutor plans to let the matter drop. He does not care to risk the vengeance of the Mer Rouge. They have sworn, you know, to kill anyone who betrays them. Oh, one never knows who in a gathering are members of the secret band. Oh, it's a pity. The poor woman. Uh, it is not good for business either. Uh, well, good day then, monsieur. Uh, good day, madame, and thank you. Madame, you know why she died? Yes, a man, I know. She was mistaken for me. Now I wonder when he will learn his mistake. If a man had not been with me to share the terror, I could never have found my way to Strasbourg. There we'd rented a small, ill-lighted room, and for a day or two we felt secure in it, out of their murderous reach. We saw no one, we went nowhere, but at last the time came when our money was gone, and Amand went out in search of a job. When she returned, 
Madame, the pay is not much, but it will help until you can get some money of your own. These people you're to work for, they, they sound like good folk. You should be very happy. I won't see you every day. Oh, Amand, how can that matter? But it is not that which worries me. Well, then, what is it? I had some trouble today. Remember the jeweler to whom you sold your ring? Yes, of course I do. He is here, in Strasbourg. He saw me. I am positive he knew who I was, because he followed me. I felt sure I managed to lose him, but now I can't be sure. Oh, Amand, then it's not safe for you to leave here again. That, that jeweler, he's working for my husband. Yes, madame. But I'm sure that nothing will happen to me. Oh, your life is in danger, Romant. But you said yourself we need the money my job will bring. I must go, madame. I promise. Oh, no. I must go. Romant, come back. That evening, a knock sounded on my door. I was filled with terror. I didn't answer it. Then slowly the door began to swing open. Madame... Madame Latourette. No, no. You have the wrong room. Go away. You are, Madame Tourelle. I know you are. No, no. Do not be afraid of me. I haven't come here to do you harm. What do you want? My name is Baron de Ritter. Oh, you are... Yes, my wife was the Baroness de Ritter. She was murdered by the Mount Rouge. I, I, I had nothing to do with it, Baron. Believe me, I... My I know husband... you are innocent, Madame. I have come to help you. How, how did you find me? The jeweler, your maid. I've been searching for you for weeks. But... But how can you help? It's simple. I would find this man, the Stella Tourelle, and see that he is hanged for the murder of my wife. He's in hiding. He has many accomplices. Only you can help me find him. But uh, how can I do that? Your husband knows now that it was not you he murdered, but my wife. He would find you if he can and kill you, too. Yes, it is my life he wants, my silence. Then we must seek him out before he can find you. But how? What could it I... It would mean risking your life, madame. Perhaps even death. Perhaps death would be better than... Then this hiding, what shall I do? Then you will help me. It's very simple. All you must do is leave this room and walk about Strasbourg. Someone of the Mount Rouge will see you. He will report to your husband, and then he will come out from his hiding place to... to kill you. And if he succeeds... I will take every protection to see that he will not succeed. But there is still the risk. Before you answer, madame, I... I must tell you... Yes? You are made, Amand. Tonight she was stabbed in the heart. Oh, Amant. Poor Amant. Now, what is your answer? I will do it, Baron. When do I start? There is no need to wait. Tonight, madame. Tonight. All of Strasbourg seemed silent. Sleep that night. And even the air was still with a solemn hushness. I walked along the dark streets. The flesh on my back crawled with terror. For constantly I pictured my husband creeping behind me to strike. On and on I went. Forgetting to feel tired. Forgetting everything except that soon it would be over. One way or the other. Any moment might bring death. Or a free life. The night grew cold. Now and again I, I turned to look back, searching the shadows for even a glimpse of the Baron and the gendarmes who were following me. Never once did I see them. I could have sworn they were not there. I turned the corner. <gasps> Monsieur de Latourelle. Yes, it is I, Anne. That knife, shining in the light. You're... You're going to kill me. Yes, I am going to kill you. Jardin, seize him. There. There, Monsieur de la Tourelle. Your murderous career is over. Gendarmes, take him away. So they took him away. And on his face was a hideous sneer of hatred for me. His wife, here on this empty street, down this cold gray wall of stone, the rain from the heavens falls, free rain, and in a moment, he will be dead. In a moment, I will be... Now, now it is done. I'm free at last. 
Monsieur de Latourelle. My husband. Oh, if I could have helped you. If you had wanted my love or my help. Poor Monsieur de Latourelle. Poor man. You did not really live. For you never knew the happiness of goodness. Or the serenity of kindness in your soul. So may you feel the sweet, free rain upon your heart. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the immortal story, The Red Hand. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. <laughs>